so uh, some portion of the syllabus was left and uh, we have to prepare online uh, lectures for it because uh, not very sure whether classes uh, when it will happen so the time is not wasted so that uh, I made a ppt and uh, this video lecture i'll be sharing i'll be sharing it to your uh, class representatives and they will be sharing it to you so uh, the portion uh, which is left at, uh, next uh, the syllabus which is left uh, this weld metallurgy uh, welding defects and methods of weld testing uh, then ultrasonic welding electron beam welding and laser beam welding these last three topics uh, these are non conventional welding methods so we'll see these in, uh, in brief uh, today we'll focus mostly on uh, weld metallurgy so in this ppt we'll discuss what is weld metallurgy what are the different zones in a fusion weld and then uh, some uh, concepts regarding weld metal solidification um, uh, epitaxial growth and competitive growth what is meant by this which is a sort of important in uh, weld metallurgy so uh, what is weld metallurgy weld metallurgy is a branch of science a field of study which deals with studying the changes in the base metal during the welding process and how it affects the mechanical properties of the final weld so as we know welding is a complicated process uh, not the actual process but the heat which is being input and the actual mechanism which is happening during the welding process a uh, lot of thing happen during welding the metal melts the filler rod melts the electrode which is used that also melts so the molten metal is in a uh, uh, molten metal is highly susceptible for absorbing the gases from the atmosphere so if improper shielding is there it may absorb gases from the atmosphere also so gas metal reactions may take place some surface phenomenal changes may happen the molten metal for the filler uh, from the filler rod it may enter the weld pool so after all this happens when the welding torch or the welding heat source has moved ahead then the weld metal will start solidifying also uh, the weld metal solidifies with varying rates of cooling so this you may or may not be knowing that uh, the final metallurgy of a metallic specimen it depends on uh, the heat which is being input and the rate at which the uh, specimen is being cooled so during welding uh, the heat input is a complicated thing lots of different temperatures are involved during the welding process uh, the temperature ranges from melting point to far below the melting point so so many uh, temperature variations are uh, given to the base plate uh, so many temperature variations exist on the base plate and also the cooling rates are different depending upon the type of the joint which you are making depending upon the thickness of the plate depending upon the thermal conductivity of the plate the specimen the cooling rates are different so different cooling rates will result in different types of microstructure of course for uh, fully understanding these uh, as i've told in class also you should uh, you should read the iron carbon diagram and the triple t diagram uh, but uh, we may not get the chance to cover it in class maybe you can read it up yourself and if any doubts are there you can uh, you can get back to me but the thing which is to which is to be remembered is the metallurgy which is resulting during the welding it is a function of majorly two things how much heat we are giving how much temperature we are raising to the uh, how much temperature we are raising in the base plate and second it depends on the cooling rate how fast it is being cooled so if it is being cooled fast some other microstructure will happen if it is cooled a bit slowly some other thing will happen we'll see what happens in which case so why study welding metallurgy the overall mechanical properties of a weldment weldment is the welded specimen it is determined by the properties of the individual microstructure present in the weld deposit and the weld heat affected zone so weld deposit and the weld heat affected zone which is called as hz we'll see these things in detail the point which is being made over here is that the overall mechanical properties it depends on the individual microstructure and the individual microstructure in turn it depends on the type of heat which is being given the cooling rate which i have told in the previous slide also so the major problem associated with the welding is that uniform mechanical properties are difficult to obtain as i have told you uh, initially while discussing the introduction to welding that the main point uh, the main idea behind welding is that the mechanical properties should be constant throughout ideally for the welded joint the properties should be better than the base plate but it should be constant throughout at least it should be constant throughout but welding process the heat input the metallurgy of the process itself is such that Uh, obtaining a uniform mechanical properties are difficult for this reason uh, this reason we should study welding metallurgy to understand how the properties are changing how we can control it and uh, welding metallurgy is concerned with melting of electrode and base metal solidification of weld metal gas absorption and slag metal reaction this i have told previously also
now next in uh, world metallurgy uh, we'll talk about the different zones which are present in a fusion welded joint so as can be seen from the uh, diagram which is given here these are the two plates on which a butt weld has been created so this is first plate and uh, this is the second plate on which a butt weld has been created so as can be seen from the diagram there are basically four regions one is the fusion zone which is the weld zone another is the weld interface next is heat affected zone and then we have the unaffected base metal so these are the four major zones which are present so this uh, typical fusion welded joint it varies in the metallurgical structure the metallurgy the microstructure of the uh, material it varies from the fusion zone till the unaffected base metal zone so why this variation is taking place uh, this we will try to understand and uh, this heat affected zone is quite important this heat affected zone itself is comprised of three more zones we'll see what are those and uh, of course since the microstructure is varying the final mechanical property also varies so we'll see how the uh, microstructure is varying and what is the effect on the final mechanical properties so first is the fusion zone fusion zone is also known as weld zone or the weld metal zone it forms at the center of the weld wherever we want to perform the welding the center of that joint uh, is known as the weld zone or the fusion zone here the weld metal solidifies from the molten state this basically solidification mechanism is almost similar to that of a casting with a minor difference we'll see what difference but this zone almost behaves uh, like a casting Uh, this is a mixture of parent metal and electrode the electrode metal uh, comes from the filler metal the ratio of the parent metal and the electrode material it depends on the type of the welding process also on the type of joint and the type of plate thickness so these three things the type of the welding process the type of joint and the thickness of the plate this uh, decides this uh, dictates uh, the composition of the weld zone similar to a casting process the microstructure in the fusion zone is expected to change significantly so this microstructure of the welded zone it is completely different from that of the base metal because the base metal has completely molten and then it has when the welding heat source has moved ahead then it has solidified so the microstructure which is obtained is completely different and the grain sizes and all we'll see uh, in subsequent slides how the grain sizes are different uh, the region the reason why the microstructure is completely different because this uh, fusion zone it is exposed to a temperature which is well beyond the effective liquidus temperature so liquidus temperature is the temperature beyond which the particular metallic specimen is completely molten so the base plate is completely molten and then it solidifies that's why the microstructure is completely different than that of the base material next uh, we have the weld interface weld interface is this narrow region uh, just adjacent to the fusion zone this narrow region this weld interface is in between the heat affected zone and the fusion zone so weld interface is also referred to as as the mushy zone weld interface also undergoes melting but this weld interface region is not that much homogeneous because the mixing is not proper in case of the fusion zone in this region the melting was uh, there complete melting was taking place but the mixing was also proper but in case of weld interface again melting is there but the mixing is not proper mixing is improper because the forces which are responsible for mixing like the buoyancy force the surface tension gradient force the friction force i have written fraction here it should be the friction force so these forces uh, are not that much uh, effective in this region that's why the mixing is uh, sort of improper in this this is known as weld interface it is a very narrow region next we have the heat affected zone heat affected zone is adjacent to the weld interface so if you this is a schematic uh, only so this was the uh, weld zone this narrow region this is the weld interface this region is the weld interface and adjacent to it this complete region this is the heat affected zone so heat affected zone is the portion of the parent metal that did not melt but it underwent a thermal cycle it was exposed to a different uh, varying uh, ranges of temperature it was exposed to those different temperatures so that significant microstructural changes have taken place it has not completely molten but still the grain structure is quite different than that of the base material the width of the hz it varies according to the welding process so normal shielded metal arc welding the heat is not that much concentrated so hz is a bit wider and then later we'll see in electron beam welding the heat is uh, highly concentrated so hz is not that much so it depends on the type of the welding process which is being used so hz 
uh, is subjected to a complex thermal cycle which i have told and hz consists of a series of graded structures ringing the weld bead so if this is the weld bead so adjacent to it a series of microstructures are present so uh, as i have told you this region uh, constitutes the hz so you can see the grain sizes are quite different also hz is the weakest region of the welded specimen we'll see later uh, uh, or you can see in this figure also this portion of the hz which is sort of the middle of the heat affected zone the grain structures the grain sizes are very very small the grain sizes are small that's why the hardness is quite high and this region is highly susceptible to failure so hz is the weakest region of the welded specimen uh, other than the portions which are having obvious defects of course if defects are present that will fail but if everything is constant and uh, it is an ideal weld is being produced still hz is the portion of the welded region where the joint is susceptible to failure as an engineer it is a job it is our job to reduce the hz as much as possible as it unnecessarily changes the properties of the base metal because as a, we, we have seen that this is the microstructure of the base metal and this microstructure is different than that of the base metal so this microstructure is underwent some changes which are not required unnecessary changes are being made so we want to minimize this hz as much as possible so these are the three regions uh, of hz first is this region which uh, is known as grain growth region grain growth region is just adjacent to the weld interface so this narrow portion was the weld interface adjacent to it we have a grain growth region grain growth region the grain sizes are larger so temperatures in this grain growth region has reached well above the upper critical temperature upper critical temperature is the temperature at which new grains are formed so the temperature in the grain growth region is quite high than that of the upper critical temperature so new grains have formed and the new grains have grown also grain growth is also taken place that's why the grain sizes are larger next we have grain refined region which is around middle of the hz grain refined region the temperature is just above the upper critical temperature again a uh, spelling mistake is there i'll modify it just above the upper critical temperature so again upper critical temperature is the temperature at which new grains are formed so new grains have formed but since it is just above upper critical temperature so new grains which are formed they did not get a chance to grow that's why this region they have smallest grain size and then we have a grain transition region temperature is uh, below the upper critical temperature so new grains does not form partial recrystallization takes place so this is the third region and beyond grain transition region we have the base plate so base plate the microstructure has not changed significantly no changes uh, are observed so uh, this way uh, due to the difference in the heat input different microstructures are obtained uh, during the welding process so what are the consequences of it so if we plot a graph uh, two plots two curves are there the first one is for temperature so temperature is highest at the weld center and as you go away from the weld center distance from weld center as you go away from the weld center the temperature falls hardness also i have plotted here so hardness is low at the weld center it keeps on increasing as it goes towards the heat affected zone of course weld interface the grain size is very small but still it is a very small region so it has not show it has not been shown over here but the point which is to be seen from here is in the heat affected zone the middle of the heat affected zone the grain refined region the hardness is maximum hardness is maximum because the grain sizes are the smallest because of this since the hardness is maximum this portion strength is a bit lower so that's why this is susceptible to failure so as an engineer it is our job to minimize the heat affected zone so that such regions are not uh, much wider because if the hz is more then this uh, grain refined region will also be more so we want to minimize hz so that such changes are not present next is the concept of epitaxial solidification so epitaxial solidification definition i have given over here so if you uh, try to understand the uh, metallurgy how the grain growth takes place so the grain growth uh, the solidification how the solidification takes place so solidification takes place through nucleation and grain growth nucleation uh, normally nucleation takes place on either an existing substrate or it takes place through homogeneous nucleation route in case of weld metallurgy the nucleation the new grain formation they take place on the existing grains epitaxial solidification it is a type of solidification in which the existing solid grains which are partially melted they serve as a interface uh, uh, they serve as a location for further grain growth to take place so weld uh, if you uh, try to visualize the welding process uh, 
welding process the heat which is being input at the joint which is to be formed that joint it undergoes melting so the portion adjacent to the joint it also undergoes melting but there comes a interface where the grains are partially molded and beyond which the grains are solid so the grain boundaries at the partially molten region at the interface they serve as the location for the further grain growth as i have said solidification it proceeds uh, through nucleation and grain growth mechanism for nucleation if the nucleation is taking place at the already existing grain boundary then it is energetically favorable of course there is a theory behind it homogeneous nucleation heterogeneous nucleation but uh, i am not going to get into that because that is a separate part of metallurgy but you should just remember this if the nucleation is taking place at an already existing grain boundary then it is energetically favorable in case of welding this already existing grain boundaries are there because partially molten grains are present so the further nucleation will take place on those on those partially molten grain boundaries also the grains which are growing from the partially molten grain boundaries they will have the same orientation as the grain from which it is growing but the adjacent grains may have different orientation i will try to explain it suppose this is the first grain it is oriented in this direction so the grain which is grown which is growing from this it will also have the same orientation similarly suppose this grain the lowest grain it is oriented in this direction so the grain which is growing during the solidification of the weld zone the grain which is growing inside the weld pool it will also have the similar orientation but the adjacent grains they may have a different orientation for example this one is oriented in horizontal direction this one is oriented in an angular direction this one is oriented in some other angular direction right so different grains will have different orientations but the grain which is growing from the already existing partially molten grain these two grains they will have the same orientation competitive growth so during the epitaxial solidification different grains are growing so grain growth is affected by two things first is the thermal gradient and second is the crystal orientation so if the grain growth direction is parallel to the direction in, in which the thermal gradient is highest then the grain growth will be favorable because heat is being dissipated high uh, the heat dissipation is more in this, that direction so the grains are favorably oriented towards that they can easily grow in that direction where the heat is being maximum dissipated second thing some crystal orientations are preferred growth direction for example face centered cubic and body centered cubic materials these materials have 100 direction as the preferred growth direction again 100 i have written here i hope that you know what are miller indices if you don't know what are miller indices maybe you should read it up i don't i cannot cover it here it's part of metallurgy but if any doubts are there maybe i will try to address it if you ask me uh, through the uh, you have my contact details so if you ask me i will try to explain but these are the miller indices they are used for uh, denoting the direction so face centered cubing and body centered cubing material they have 100 as the preferred growth direction so the grains which are oriented in the preferred growth direction also it is oriented in the favorable thermal gradient direction those grains will grow more which is sort of obvious thing if a grain is oriented favorably thermally also and the crystal orientation is also favorable then that grain will grow more that grain will grow at the expense of its neighboring grains for example the grain which is having favorable thermal gradient also having favorable crystal orientation it will grow more and its neighbor, neighboring grain which is not having those favorable things it cannot grow that much so the grain which is having everything favorable that will grow more and the grain which is Uh, not having the favorable orientation or the or the thermal gradient it won't be able to grow that much so growth of this favorable grain is at the expense of the neighbor the neighbor cannot grow he himself is growing so this is called as competitive growth competitive growth is a concept which is present during solidification competitive growth takes place because some grains are favorably oriented in terms of thermal gradient and in terms of crystal orientation that's why they grow more so such type of growth is called as competitive growth so that is all regarding weld metallurgy and these are my contact details which i hope everyone has and if any doubts are there you can uh, ask me uh, you can email me or you can whatsapp me or you can call me up during working hours or even beyond that also and if any doubts are there you can get back to me uh, iron carbon diagram triple t diagram miller indices these are part of elementary metallurgy which i have not covered but if any doubts are there you can ask me and uh, circulate this ppt amongst your friends stay healthy stay safe